This video will review how to factor trinomials where the coefficient of the x squared is only a 1. We'll review how to factor trinomials with a leading coefficient other than 1 in a separate video. First, let's begin by reviewing what factoring is. Factoring is to rewrite the problem as a product using multiplication. Right now, our area is as a sum. We have x squared added to 8x added to 15. All three parts are added together, hence the sum. We want to write it as a product, meaning some quantity times another quantity. To do this, we'll start with an area model. The area model of x squared plus 8x plus 15 would have one of the large x squared tiles using x by x dimension. It would have eight of the rectangles, each one by x in dimension, and 15 of the little one squares, each one by one in dimensions. We need to find a way to arrange these tiles using the eight x's that provide a space for 15 of the ones tiles. I need to break the eight x's apart. The way I'm going to do this is I know that 5 plus 3 is 8, and 5 times 3 is 15. If I arrange the tiles in this fashion, the 5x and the 3x give me a total of 8x's, and the space that they provide, the 5 by 3, uses the 15 ones. I therefore can say that the dimensions of this new rectangle would be the x extended 5 units, or quantity x plus 5, by x extended 3 units, which would be the quantity x plus 3. The area could therefore be written as the area of x equals the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 5. You can also reverse and say the area of x equals the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. The quantities can be reversed, the order is not important. For problem 2, I've got to take the x squared, the 10x's, and the 9, and arrange them in order to create that rectangle. I need to break the 10x's up in such a way that the two piles add to be the 10x's, but provide a space for 9 of the 1's. I know that 9 plus 1 is 10, and that 9 times 1 is 9. I'll therefore arrange it like this. I'll take the x and extend it 9 units, and have the other dimension, x, extended 1 unit. The 1x plus the 9x gives me the 10x's, and the space they provide, the 1 times 9, means I can fill it with 9 of the 1's tiles. The area of it can therefore be written as this. The quantity x plus 9 times the quantity x plus 1. Now there are other ways to do this. We could simplify this process um, using the what we call a diamond, a diamond problem approach. For the diamond problems, we know that we need to find a way to make the back number by multiplication. The 15, or the 9, depending on the example you look at, was multiplication. It was a 5 by 3, 5 times 3 that made 15, and it was a 9 by 1, or 9 times 1 that made 9. In a diamond problem approach, the top will be called the product the product being multiplication. So for this first problem, I'm looking at the value of c as being 15. I need two numbers that multiply to be 15. The bottom of the diamond we refer to as the sum. That means I need two numbers that add to be 8. So thinking of two numbers that multiply to be 15 and add to be 8 would be 5 and 3. Now be careful. You can only use the diamond problem without having to use the boxes if the problem is a trinomial with a 1x squared. If it is a 1x squared, we can go straight from the diamond problem and say that these two numbers generate our factors, the 5 and the 3. Therefore, it's the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 3. In a similar fashion for the second problem, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be 9 but add to be 10. 9 times 1 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. Therefore, the 9 and the 1 show up as my factors, the quantity x plus 9 times the quantity x plus 1. Again, this works really well if it's a trinomial with a 1x squared. If it's not a 1x squared, you're going to have to modify your approach a little bit. Again, we'll do that in a separate video. All right, I'm going to put some problems up on the next slide. I want you to try them using the diamond problem approach. All right, for problem number one, we're going to go ahead and we need to find two factors that multiply to be 20 and add to be 12. I begin by going and trying to find out different ways to make 20 by multiplication. 20 could be 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 5 times 4. I need to figure out which of those actually adds to be 12, though. 1 times 20 would add to be 21, so that's not going to work. 
and the 4 times 5 would only add to be 9. That wouldn't work. Therefore, I know that the factors I want to use are the 10 and the 2. If it's a 1x squared, which this problem is, I can then go from the diamond problem to my factored form. The factored form would be the quantity x plus 10 times the quantity x plus 2. Again, you can reverse it. It could also be set as the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 10. At this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and try the other five problems on your own. When you're ready, resume the video. I'll give you a moment. Hopefully, you've had a chance to work the problems out. Let's go through them. We'll do the diamond problem, and we see that we're looking for a product of 12 and a sum of 7. Again, we go through different ways to make 12 by multiplying, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 4 times 3, until we find the one that adds to be 7. In this case, it's 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, 4 plus 3 is 7. This tells me, because it's in the form of a 1x squared, that we can just go straight to the factored form of quantity, x plus 4 times quantity x plus 3. For problem 3, now we're looking for factors of 32 that add to be 18. I know that 16 times 2 is 32, and 16 plus 2 is 18. Therefore, the factored form would be the quantity x plus 16 times the quantity x plus 2. For number 4, we've got factors that multiply to be 5 and add to be 6. There's only really one way that we can make 5 using whole numbers, 5 times 1. And it's convenient because 5 plus 1 is 6. This tells me the factored form is the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 1. Now problem 5 and 6 introduce the negative sign. We need to watch out for this. When we set up the diamond for number 5, it's a positive 12 on top, but a negative 8 because it's minus 8x that goes on the bottom. This tells me that I'm looking for factors that multiply to be a positive 12, but combine to be a negative 8. Now knowing what I know about signs, a positive times a positive would be a positive number up top, but so would a negative times a negative. I could not have a positive times a negative because that would generate a negative at the top. So this tells me that I have two negative numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be negative 8. I know that negative 6 times negative 2 would be positive 12, and negative 6 plus negative 2 would be negative 8. My factored form is therefore the quantity x minus 6 times the quantity x minus 2. On the last one we set up the diamond, it's a negative 24 for the product, because it's minus 24 at the end. The middle value, the negative 2, tells me it's a negative 2 for the sum. I'm looking for two factors that multiply to be negative 24 and add to be negative 2. Because the product up top is negative, I know that I'm dealing with one factor that's positive and one that's negative. A positive times a negative is negative. On the bottom, I see that we have a negative 2. This tells me the factor with a greater absolute value is the minus. So therefore, I'm looking for numbers that subtract to be negative 2. Hmm. If I think about how to make 24 by multiplying, I need to subtract them to get that 2. I know that negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. The difference of 6 and 4 is 2. And if negative 6 is what I have in a positive 4, negative 6 plus 4 would actually be a negative 2 as a sum. Because it's a 1x squared, I therefore know the factored form is the quantity x minus 6 times the quantity x plus 4. I hope this helps you, and thank you for watching.